welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to make the long and stripy shawl. This beautiful shawl uses very simple stitches and is great for a beginner to venture into making shawls. You begin the shawl at the wingspan edge with four stitches. Then you change colors every two rows and increase every sixth row along the bottom edge. You will also be slipping the stitches as if to purl the entire way through the shawl with the exception of when you need to change colors. What's great about this pattern is you're working in garter stitch and then when you get to section two, you're still in garter stitch, but it's a solid color. There's no more changing colors. And then in section three, which is the seed stitch stripes, you combine uh, stockinette stitch and seed stitch. Once you understand all of these sections, you can easily complete this shawl, making it great for beginners. The only thing left to understand is how to do a decrease because on the opposite side of the shawl, you decrease back down to four stitches. This is a free pattern available at redheart.com. I've put a link to the pattern in the video description box right down there below. Along with the pattern, you will need four different colors of With Love yarn and one ball of each color. That's all you need as far as the yarn. For the needles, you need to use the size needles that you get gauge with. The pattern calls for a size six, which is a US size six, a four millimeter knitting needle in 20 four inch circulars. I find that for the gauge given on the pattern, I need larger needles, so I'm gonna be using size nine 24 inch circulars. We use circulars to accommodate the number of stitches for the shawl. You will find it difficult if you use straight needles because all of your stitches will be really crammed onto those needles as you get towards the middle of the shawl. Once you have your materials and the free pattern, join me back here. I'm gonna show you how to work all of the different stitches you need to know in order to create this really fun shawl pattern. As I mentioned, I'm using a larger needle than what the pattern calls for because this is what I need to get gauge. I'm also going to use some different colors than the sample shawl so that way you can better see the stitches here on the camera. We begin with a slip knot and place that slip knot directly onto your knitting needle. Now, it doesn't matter what method of cast on you use, but get four stitches cast on to your needle. Once you have those four stitches cast on, go ahead, place that needle into your left hand, and we will be ready to begin. If you take a look at the note section of this pattern, you will see that you are supposed to slip the first stitch of every row, with the exception of the rows where you change colors. You will actually knit that first stitch. Because the designer does not indicate whether you're supposed to knit purlwise or knitwise, we're going to go with the rule of thumb of slipping the stitch purlwise. With my yarn in front, I'll take my right hand needle and go into that first stitch as if to purl and then slip it off. My next stitch is a knit front and back, so I want to make sure I take my yarn, move it between my needles and put it back to the back. Now this next stitch, we're gonna do a knit front and back. So we will go into the stitch, and knit it, so we yarn over our right hand needle, bring that yarn over through, and we pause for a second. We are not gonna let that stitch jump off the left hand needle yet. If you extend your right hand needle a little bit and then swivel it around, you can go into the back leg of that same stitch on your left hand needle. Yarn over your needle and bring that through. Now you have two stitches where there was one. Now I can let that stitch drop off my left hand needle. I will go ahead and continue on the row by knitting the last two stitches. This is a right side row. So in order to make sure that I am always identifying the right side correctly, I like to use a stitch marker and I will place the stitch marker just directly into the stitches right here on this right side. So that way, whenever I'm in doubt, if I put my work down and pick it back up and don't know where I am, I know where I am because of the stitch marker. That's very helpful for beginners. Now we'll go ahead and we will turn our work. And this first stitch, remember, we want to slip it as if to purl. So I want to bring my yarn to the front, slip the stitch as if to purl. So I go in as if to purl, slip it off bring my yarn between my needles and to the back, and now I will knit all of these stitches. Now 
Notice there was not an increase on that row, it was simply just working in knit row. Now I turn my work and I am on row three and it's time for me to introduce a new color. So I'm going to go ahead and grab another color here. And when we work these stitches on a new row where we're introducing a new color, we actually knit the first stitch, we do not slip it. So I am going to knit that first stitch with my new color. Notice I did not cut my old color, I'm leaving it there, and then pull it off. And I'll go ahead and knit my stitches to the end. I'm also holding my yarn in my left hand for these stitches, but the instructions are exactly the same and I'm still doing the knit stitches exactly the same. I'm just holding my yarn in a different hand because there are people out there who knit continental and there's people out there who knit English. So I want to make sure I show both ways. Now we're back to this side of our work, which is the wrong side, and we are not changing colors on this side, so we can slip this first stitch. So I want to bring my yarn to the front, go into the stitch as if to purl, slip it off, bring my yarn between my needles back to the back, and then knit to the end. It's okay, this stitch gets a little bit loose. You could just pull that end a little bit and it'll tighten it up. Turn your work. It's time to change colors. The designer did indicate that she wanted the, the new color you're going to use to go behind the old color. So I'm going to pick up the color that I just left hanging out there. It was my color A, which is my olive green color. And notice I'm just pulling it from behind. I wanna make sure I don't pull it too, too tight and make that stitch pucker. I wanna make sure it has a nice little slack to it. I will also knit this first stitch because it is a change of color and I will knit to the end of the row. No increases yet, we won't increase until we change color again. Rotate my work. I'm on the side where I'm not changing color, so I will slip as if to purl, bring my yarn between my needles, and then knit to the end. I want to show you how to do this increase one more time because you will be working these increases until you get to the section where it's time to do your decreases. So I've rotated my work. It's time for me to do row seven. I'm also changing colors on this row. So I want to make sure and I grab the color I want to use, bring it up to the through the bring it up along the back. And I will do a knit one. And now I need to do a knit front and back. So I'm gonna show you how to do a knit front and back holding the yarn in my left hand. I go into the stitch and I knit it, extend, swivel my right hand needle, go into the back leg of that stitch and knit it again, and then off. The motion and everything is identical to when I hold the yarn in my right hand as my left hand. It's identically the same. You can notice here that by slipping those first stitches, we're getting a nice elongated knit looking stitch here that is extended across two rows and it makes it look really nice. Here's what we know so far. The knit front and back increase. How to do garter stitch by knitting every row. Slipping the first stitch purlwise with the yarn in front and how to change colors and carry a color up from a couple rows below. That is all you need to know to get through section one. Once you're done with section one, you jump into section two, which is doing all of those things except for changing colors. You will only use color C in section two. See, it's really easy so far, right? All you need to do is make sure you keep track of how many rows you're on and how many stitches you have. When you get to the end of section two, that's when it's time to start doing the seed stitch stripes. Really easy, let's go ahead and learn how to do those now. We begin the seed stitch stripes with color D. I'm gonna use a really pretty yellow color as my color D for this part. And we will begin with a slip stitch, but remember, we're changing colors, so I wanna go ahead and knit that first stitch. Then I do a knit front and back. At this point, you should know how to do a knit front and back, so I'm not going to go slow on that part. And then I just knit to the end. So far, easy peasy, you've been doing this all along, nothing new, but now we have 12 stitches on my sample. And on your sample, you have 42 stitches if you're following along with the pattern. I then will turn my work 
and I will slip the first stitch. So I will bring my yarn forward, slip as if to purl, and bring it off. But the next stitch I want to do is a purl. So I don't want to move my yarn to the back because I need to purl. So my yarn will stay up front and I'll just begin purling. So I'm going to purl all the way down to the last stitch of this row. When I get to the last stitch of the row, I will knit one. So let's get to the last stitch of the row here. And I will knit one. Turn my work and we begin row three and we bring in color C. Now my color C is this really beautiful coral color here. So I wanna go ahead, drop my color D, grab my color C, bring it up along the back just like I've been doing all along and I will go into the row three. So row three has us start off with a slip stitch. Again, I'm changing colors. So I just wanna knit that first stitch and then I knit to the end of the row. On the next row, I wanna start doing seed stitch. And when I do the seed stitch, I will jump in to the pattern on the wrong side of the seed stitch. If you're looking at the special stitches of the pattern, you'll notice there's a right side and a wrong side for the seed stitch. It's important that you pay attention to your shawl. If you're working on the wrong side, make sure you're following along with the wrong side instructions. So as I turn my work here, I begin with my slip one with my yarn in front and slip as if to purl, and then I work seed stitch. The first, seed, the first stitch on the wrong side when working seed stitch is a purl one. So I purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. Notice as I go between my purls and my knits, I'm bringing my yarn between my needles. Let me hold my yarn in my opposite hand for those of you who like to see it with the yarn in your right hand. So I'm gonna tension it here. I ended with a knit, so I gotta bring my yarn between my needles and work a purl. Bring my yarn between my needles and work a knit. Between my needles, work a purl. Between my needles, work a knit. I wanna make sure I end the row with a knit one, no matter where I am in the pattern. So I ended with a knit one. Turn my work and I'm on row five. Row five, I am not going to change colors, okay? So I'm still using my color C and I continue on in the seed stitch pattern. So this first one, I will slip as if to purl, okay, with my yarn in front and then bring my yarn back to the back and I start off with a knit one. If ever I get lost, all I need to do is take a look at what that stitch is because I wanna create the stitch into the stitch that's on my left hand needle opposite, meaning I'm looking at a purl, which means the stitch I need to create in here has to be a knit. If you're looking at a knit, you know you have to create a purl. So it's always the opposite of whatever you're looking at on your left hand needle. So that is how you create the seed stitch. It's really easy and when you carry on, you're gonna get this really cool bump effect as you're working all of these stitches. And you end with your knit one, pretty easy. Turn your work and once again, we will do the wrong side of our seed stitch over here. So I will slip the first stitch. I'm looking at a knit, so I want to purl and then I continue on working the seed stitch. When I get to the end of the row, I then will go back and I'm going to repeat rows one through six. Remember you wanna end with a knit and then turn. I no longer wanna use color C, I'm going back to color D and I wanna make sure I pull color D back behind I knit that first stitch because I'm changing colors and then it's time to increase again. So I will work my knit front and back and then knit to the end of the row. Pretty simple, right? So far so good. You also need to remember that when you're in this section and you're using your color D, when you get to the wrong side, you're going to be working those pearls that way you can get the stockinette. So I rotate my work. I will slip the first one as if to purl with my yarn in front 
and then I will purl all the way down to the last stitch of the row and I will knit one just to keep those edge stitches as knits. So I'm going to get all the way down here to the end of the row and then I will do a knit one. We'll rotate this around so you can see what we have here. So as I set this down, you can see we have our nice garter stitch ridges, which we did with um, changing colors every two rows. Then this represents section two, where it was just a solid color. And this represents the seed stitch stripes, where you get the stockinette color with color D. And then you go to this really cool textured seed stitch with color C again. It's pretty easy to work through all of these stitches. The last stitch you need to know to create this shawl is how to do a decrease. And the cool thing about this shawl pattern is we've been working the knit front and back on the right side to do the increase. We will just change out that knit front and back with an SSK to do a decrease. Let me show you how to do an SSK so that way you know what to do when it's time to do that stitch. Once again, I'm pulling in a little swatch just so that I can show you how to work this decrease. We're going to go ahead and I will slip this first stitch as if to purl just so that we're consistent with what stitches we've been doing and I'll hold that to back to the back. And now the next two stitches I'm going to do an SSK which is a decrease. So what you do is with the right hand needle you go into the stitch as if to knit and then slip it off. Go into the next stitch as if to knit and slip it off. Take the left hand needle go into the front leg of those two stitches and then knit them together. What you've done by slipping those two stitches is you've made it so that the stitches themselves look like they lean to the left, which gives the decrease the natural lean to the direction the shawl is decreasing. So that's why you want to use an SSK. Let me show you how to work that SSK one more time with the yarn in my left hand. I go in as if to knit and slip it off, go in as if to knit and slip it off, take my left hand needle, put it in the front leg of those two stitches, and then knit them together. And I created the decrease. Now that you've learned the decreases, there's nothing more for you to learn in order to create this really on-trend shawl. Just follow along with the pattern, changing colors when it tells you to, and changing the stitches when you're supposed to as well. You began with four stitches, you'll end with four stitches. You're gonna absolutely love this shawl. It is so beautiful, you're gonna wanna wrap it around your neck and wear it out all the time. I hope you enjoyed this video and it did help you and give you the confidence to tackle this wonderfully uh, constructed free pattern from redheart.com. I'm Marley Bird, proud national spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you want more videos just like that one, check out some of these other videos that I've already handpicked for you. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that way you're up to date whenever I release a new video. And don't forget, smash that like button as my kids say. Bye guys.